Chris Tim was just telling me we were he was watching the local news yesterday. It was a heartbreaking story about a woman who was trying to raise awareness about fentanyl and how it can kill so many so many young people. It's it's kind of this it's this really memorable, sad, poignant campaign. It shows these young people mm-hmm. happy smiling faces and they're forever eighteen, forever twenty three. Oh, because that's yeah. the age they overdosed on fentanyl. I think so it's the, I think it's I think it's the number one problem in America. Fentanyl. I mean, there's a lot of problems, but I think that is the number one because so many lives are cut short by... I mean, don't authorities always carry Narcan with them now because there's so many fentanyl overdoses? It's just yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous how that has gotten. But Chris Tim was saying he's watching the local news. And this woman is telling this heartbreaking tale and behind her, and I, I shouldn't have even noticed, but I did. Mm-hmm. Our... Billboard kept popping up behind her on this electronic billboard, just rotating through perfectly every time. Chris they would, and Chris. They would cut to her. Chris and Chris. Hey, here we are. <laughs> I, he, I saw the same story. You saw it. I did. I saw you it saw too. It. Yeah. And I noticed it as well. Mm. Again, to me, I was distracted by um, the actual. <laughs> there we are. Very serious story. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, oh, there's my face. <laughs> oh, God. I'm it's bad. wrong to think it. It's like. But it's like, well, we were after that because mm-hmm. you know, it's a rotating series of, yes. of, of billboards. We were always afraid, especially when uh, undercover reporters were going after uh, pedophiles. Oh, yeah, the Chris Hansen model. Yeah, they'd meet up with like 15-year-olds in hotels, but it'd really be the cops. They'd show up stark naked with food yeah. and, and lube. Yeah, <laughs> and then be like, I just wanted to talk. Yeah. <laughs> And that we'd always be afraid that one of them was going to be wearing a two guys named Chris shirt yeah. on the way out. In or where they're hustling him out in handcuffs. Yeah, in handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, you know, a bag over his head, but yet he's yeah. got a two guys named Chris show. That's how the cops always uh, made sure it was the right guy. They gave him very specific things to bring. Yeah. So it was always something bizarre. It'd be like Chips Ahoy, yep. uh, a hammer, lube. <laughs> and your two guys named Chris yeah, shirt. condoms and your two guys named Chris shirt. And they'd show up and have all that and then try to be like, no, this is coincidence. <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just a guy. I just I walk around with hammers a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like two guys up, Chris? It's the number one show in America. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I wish I'd seen that story. Yeah, it, the subliminal advertising, maybe the best worst <laughs> advertising ever. we've ever had. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Of course but, it is. But we're so shallow of in this course. business. Yeah. And there all we are. Biggie and I noticed. And there's our face <laughs> on the billboard rotating through. <laughs> Behind the and woman. this woman had a poster of like all these faces, and all oh. I could see is my face. <laughs> Why are they interviewing it in front of our building? I don't know. Of, yeah, the angle was so odd. <laughs> Truly, it was. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah that is that. That's going to be an issue in the campaign, isn't it? The fentanyl. Is that what Trump says? Like fentanyl comes over the border, doesn't he say? Yeah, I was going to say. I think you tie all that back to the border. Yeah. That, that the illegal drugs mm-hmm. come from the loose border. Right. So he, it all ties back there. Now, he spoke in our area yesterday. He's from my hometown. Yesterday. That's true. Donald Trump. And, uh, and I want your, super tight security. Let me get your opinion on that. This first time he's spoken outdoors since the shooting attempt, the right. assassination attempt. And he had glass in front of him. And a, a dear friend who's a hardcore Republican said he thought that made him look weak, that he was behind a glass wall hmm. speaking. But I don't know. It, it's, uh, I mean, sometimes you have to take. Yeah. Precautions you don't want to. Um, I guess. I, thought I don't was, know if that's going to be the way going forward or not. Pretty good look. He was in an air, like an air museum, and so he had airplanes behind him and made the speech Like vintage airplanes, yeah. Yeah, old school airplanes. And then he said uh, he wanted to know, because all of, like Lindsey Graham has said, don't get personal. Talk politics, Donald. Talk policy. you'll win. It's all policy. And I agree with that. Nikki Haley said the same Nikki thing. Nikki Haley says, talk policy. We win on policy. We're going to lose if you start attacking personally. But Trump loves to do that. So he did an instant poll of his fans in my hometown of Ashburn, North Carolina yesterday. Should I get personal or not? Now, he was very nasty last night. I try and be nice to people, you know, but it's a little tough when they get personal. Please, again, remember, please, sir, don't get personal. Talk about policy. Let me ask you about that. We're going to do a free poll. Here's the two questions. Should I get personal? Should I not get personal? Ready? Should I get personal? (laughs) Should I not get personal? I don't know. My advisors are fired. So he fired all his advisors right there. 
If I was in the audience and he said, should I not get personal? I was don't, yes. get, don't get personal. Yeah. Talk don't about get, policy. I want policy. I want only policy. You I would have said the greatest hits? No. I would have said I would have raised my hand and said, Sir, you'll win on policy. You will not win. Calling her comrade Kamala. You won't yeah. not win calling her comrade Kamala. <laughs> you just can't I mean it, it comes off as mean spirited, I think. <laughs> but you know that's what, that's his, what he his is diehard base I, wants I is but is him not, you know, saying her name right and saying these terrible But we mentioned that the other day and Chris Dem said, and I think you're right, if you're at a rally, you want that red meat You want the red meat out there. But I think that Trump has said so many things about so many in the two campaigns. I mean, he crushed Hillary and he, you know, crooked Joe Biden and crooked Hillary and sleepy Joe Biden, all that. Now, to me, it's no matter what he says, it's tame. You know, how at first it was like, holy cow, look what this guy is saying. It's totally different. But now it's so expected. You know what I mean? It's like it's not it's not that jarring anymore to hmm. me. When he says something like that, I'm never Remember early on, he, remember, that's his thing. You know, his brand I know is, his thing. Yeah. I don't play it by is, the rules. It is his thing, but uh, it's like he's gone so far now. Anything he does by comparison, it's like the first time you see uh, Die Hard. It's like, oh my God, look at what they've done. By the time it's Die Hard Five, you know, it's been done and done and done to death. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like I've I've gotten that's used what, to. That's it. That's what Barack said the other night. Sequels aren't as good. <laughs> yeah, Barack. They're yeah. parodying Barack. Barack was saying that. Tim Wall spoke. I call him folksy Tim Walls. Oh, don't. Why do you say that? You're very mad at That's that. That's a trigger word. Yeah. Right? You're going to get 100 emails explaining why he's not folksy. I do think he's folksy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have terrible policies, but I do think he's folksy. And I think he's a good speaker. Walls was on last night, and his son cried. Uh, his son was pointing it from the audience saying, That's my dad mm -hmm. up there speaking. And his daughter gave heart hands mm -hmm. from the audience. Yeah. You don't like heart hands. I hate heart hands. Yeah. That's what we said the other day. People hate heart hands, but she did it. He, that's, well, it's her dad. Right. That's the daughter that uh, he took to the state fair. She's the vegetarian at the state fair. The vegetarian, and she, he didn't know she was vegetarian. Hey, Minnesota. Governor Walls here out at the state fair with my daughter. Hope. Every year we as a family do something old and something new. I get to pick something, a classic, the old mill ride. We do that. Um, and then Hope gets to pick something new. I think we're going to go do the slingshot. Which I don't know what it is, and they're keeping it from me. But then we're going to go get some food, corn dog. I'm vegetarian. Turkey then. And Turkey's then, meat. Not in Minnesota, turkey special. And um, we will go do some of those things and report back. You hear that? <laughs> turkey is not meat in Turkey's Minnesota. Turkey's meat in right, Minnesota, baby. Minnesota. <laughs> No, sir. Not having that. We don't have How, any of it. Turkey um, special. <laughs> what? <laughs> they say they have a vegetarian Thanksgiving. Why not? Just turkey on the table. You know, yeah. No big deal. If you were running for vice president and they had cut to your kids in the audience. Oh, oh God. You're, would they just be staring at their phones? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, because I don't see your son standing up going, that's my dad. Oh, no. That's because that's the thing this morning is people were just so oh, moved by a him. son. Yeah. That's, that's my emotions. dad. That's yeah. my dad. And the daughter holding heart hands. And they just cut to your kids. Or they just been in their phones like, I got to get out of get here. Get out of here. <laughs> or just empty seats. Yeah. <laughs> Mom made us leave. She said so she we, was we went to a Cubs game. <laughs>